Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the Monday, October 16th, 2017 <coughs> City Council meeting to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Devine? Here. Alderman Condon? Here. Alderman Mahoney? Here. Alderman Glad? Here. Alderman Schaefer? Here. Alderman Curry? Here. Thank you. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is uh, item number four is a public hearing for vacation of unimproved public right of way located northeast of the intersection of Lincoln Road and River Road to Bodinas Marina Properties LLC. Uh, let the record show that the public hearing is called to order at 7.01 p.m. Is there any person wishing to address the city council uh, regarding this uh, public hearing at this time? I see none. Uh, there being no public input, I am looking for a motion to close the public hearing. Alderman Schaefer? So moved. Second? Alderman Curry? Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Curry? Yes. Alderman Glad? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderman Mahajic? Yes. Alderman Mahajic? Yes. Thank you, Council. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a motion to adopt an ordinance vacating uh, part of the unapproved right of way located northeast of the intersection of Lincoln Road and River Road, investing title to the same in Bodinas Marina Properties LLC, and accepting dedication of property from Bodinas Marina Properties LLC located at the north side of Lincoln Road and River Road. Alderman Curry? I'll make a motion to approve the ordinance vacating 2,003 square feet of right of way on the north side of Lincoln Road at River Road to the Bodinas Marina Properties LLC in exchange for two parcels dedicated to City McHenry on the north side of Lincoln Road, approximately 635 square feet and 224 square feet in size. Do I have a second? I'll let have it. I'll second the motion. Uh, any discussion on this item? Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Curry? Yes. Alderman Mahavik? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman McCondon? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderman Glad? Yes. Thank you, Council. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the public comment portion. This is a uh, public comment with uh, items that are not on the action items on the agenda. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak at this time? See none. Uh, moving on, uh, number seven, the consent agenda, seven uh, A through seven J. Is there any council members wanting to pull any items from this, or separate discussion? Alderman Curry. I'd like to pull item seven F. F is in Frank. Yes. Okay. Any other members of council would like to pull any other items? All right. So at this point, I'm uh, 
uh, looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda items 7A through 7E and 7G through 7J. Alderman Condon. I will <coughs> make the motion to approve the consent agenda as just listed, <coughs> excluding the item F. Thank you. Alderman Chaper. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on these items? Alderman Condon. Um, just a, a quick question with um, the holiday lighting. Um, was what we had budgeted, is that what we had budgeted in the past? It is. Okay. Yeah, we have, it's, the, it's been pretty pretty steady amount. Last year we did have to increase it $350, but I wasn't anticipating um, quite this much this year. Yeah, and, and that's the same vendor we've been using. Isn't it, it is. Yeah. Yes. So it, I guess it's not surprising that they there would be a cost increase at some point, but um, this was a little bit more than anticipated. It was a little bit more than I expected it to be, yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Alderman Curry? Well, just to follow up on that, what, what did, was there any specific reason why? Because this is more than 10% increase in, in cost. That's, I did question him on that, called up, um, called him up and just asked him why that, that was a substantial increase, I thought. He did lower it $500 after I questioned him on it, um, but really he said that was as far as he could go, given the cost of labor on his end. Um, as well as the cost of materials that have risen is what he had given to me. Okay. I'll make yeah, I'm just going to say that uh, you know we'll see what happens next year, but uh, you know the cost is going to get prohibitive. We may want to wind up looking at staff doing it. We're going to have to weigh that at the time, but uh, I mean it's you know uh, Ross will do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you're gonna check the white room? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. You so. All the chip. Yeah. If you actually, uh, I've had the pleasure of watching them do that. It's actually uh, um, about seven guys and two ladder trucks. So um, that's just the guys in the trees. <coughs> Any other discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. The roll in Condon. Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Glam? Yes. Alderman Hevick? Yes. Alderman Curry? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Thank you, Council. Uh, moving on to 7F, I'm looking for a motion uh, to approve special event liquor license for Emma Bridge Africa fundraiser hosted by St. Patrick's Catholic Church held at the Church of Holy Apostles November 4th, 5 p.m. <coughs> to 10 p.m. Alderman Curry? Well, I would make that motion if we correct the application. And that's the reason I had it pulled. Um, so I'm not prepared to make that motion as stands, but if, I, if I'll direct, so if I may discuss it first. Sure. Uh, if I direct counsel to uh, page 63 of your packet, which is the special event liquor license application. And first of all, let me say that I have no problems with this event. I fully support the event. But this application, and I've exchanged emails with staff on this uh, beginning last Thursday, but this application, the license applicant is stated as Cecilia Adams, which of course that, that's a misspelling. That's not her actual name. Um, and yet the, app, the affidavit is signed and printed, the printed name and signature is by Joe Philpy, who is an employee of Holy Apostles, which I understand, of course, that's where the event is occurring, but it raises the question is, who is the actual license applicant? Because item two clearly states license applicant is, is Cecilia Adams, and yet the affidavit, which is what holds the city and, and indicates that laws will not be violated, is signed by a different person. And it's the first one I've ever seen that way. In fact, we have another one tonight, uh, which involves the Rotary Club, where it is held in a different location as well, not owned by uh, Rotary, and yet the applicant and the signature is the same person. So I guess I just have an issue with our application. Yeah, so the, the, the actual license will go to Holy Apostles, since that's where the event's being hosted. Uh, we're going to modify this uh, application to, to state or distinguish between, if it's a, a, an instance like this again, where it's a 
whether it's a church or a service club or whoever it is, holding an event in another, another location to distinguish between the organization that's holding the event or the event is uh, benefiting uh, or for the benefit of and the location that the event's going to be held at. So basically at the top part, we'll have the organization information as well as uh, as well as where the event's being held as a sign off or as an identification at the top. And, and it'll always be the location, I shouldn't say always, but in most cases it's gonna be the location that the event's being held at and not the organization, so. And, and given our exchanges earlier, I understand all that. My issue now is with this particular one before us because I'm looking at a document that indicates that the license applicant is Cecilia Adams. So, and yet you're indicating we're going to actually issue the license to someone else, and yet the applicant is Cecilia Adams. So, I guess I'm having an issue. I would, I have no problem making a motion to approve this. Again, I support the event, but I would, I would only make that motion to approve it if we were going to straighten out this application. This, this particular application. Yes, yeah, particular yeah, application. Certainly, certainly, we can do that. Well, we will get the, we will have uh, Holy Apostles. What we'll do is we'll have Holy Apostles and, and their contact people fill the, the top part of it out also. So we'll basically have an application that has their information at the top and that they've signed the affidavit at the bottom. And that, that would satisfy, because I, I suspect they filled this out anyway because I don't think Cecilia would misspell her own name. So I suspect someone else filled this out anyway. Um, okay, in that case, I will make a motion uh, to approve the special event liquor license uh, with the change of the license applicant. Thank you. Is that a second? Second. All the way in county. Uh, any discussion on this item? All the way in county? Just as clarification, um, Mr. Um, Philby is the building manager over at Holy Apostles, so um, it makes sense that he would. To me, it made sense that he would sign the affidavit because at the event being at Holy Apostles, but um, I think as, as um, Director Moorfield had said, I, I mean, I think it makes sense that wherever the location is, they're responsible for what's happening at the location, but then the, um, the organization running it is um, also on the, on the application. Um, but I do know that all three of the Catholic churches in town are trying to be supportive of each other and, and linking um, all the, their activities. So um, that might also be maybe where some of the confusion came in. So. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in love? Yeah, now who's going to sign this? Well, it'll, be, it'll, it'll still be Holy Apostles because that's where the event's being held. I understand that, but they're not the applicant. They will be, that's what that we're gonna, we're gonna have this. Are they the ones that will be basically, I mean, it's like this, you have an organization that's coming in, they are not part of that church. What's the difference between that and when somebody comes for a liquor license for one of our parks? We don't, we don't sign the application. So it really isn't the person whose property it's on. It's the person that's actually holding the event that should be looking for the liquor license. Well, the problem is, is that our liquor code also says is that, that locations like this can only have eight events a year. And so it's being held mm -hmm. at Holy Apostles. So it actually works against their number of events. So it kind of adds to the confusion because <laughs> it's an event held at a location that can only have eight of them during the year. So we'll probably end up completely reworking this form or <coughs> something like this, because I think it's the only time since I've been here that I've seen this instance come up. So it obviously has some issues with it. If it's one organization, one location, or a city park, it's one thing, but this, this, <coughs> this is obviously confusing. Okay. Any other discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Curry? Yes. Alderman Condon? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderman Glad? Yes. Alderman Mahavik? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Thank you, Council. Uh, next item on the agenda is 8A, uh, grant request from a 
Topian Roast LLC DBA Hidden Pearl Cafe for a Class G1 liquor license located at 1250 Green Street and adoption of an ordinance increasing the number of Class G1 licenses in effect from eight to nine. Uh, that's me. Derek. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Dan and Christine Kearns, <coughs> as well with Brenda, owners of Utopian Roast LLC, uh, who are doing business as Hidden Pearl Cafe, has submitted an application, which council has, for a Class G1 uh, liquor license for their new location at 1250 North Green, formerly the Sum of the Nuts building. Uh, approval of the license will require adoption of the attached ordinance, which increases the number of gene ones from eight to nine. I would, would like to note in the uh, first paragraph of the background section of the uh, supplement, uh, staff has listed the, the other G1 uh, license holders in the city, those being Cucina Rosa, La Hacienda, Wind Hill Restaurant, Green Street Cafe, Brunch Cafe, Sakura, Kim and Patty's Cafe, and Patroon's Mexican Restaurant. And uh, the mayor and I uh, also met with uh, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, actually with Mr. Kearns and uh, Ms. Grenville last week. Thank you, Derek. Um, we do have the applicant here, Dan Kearns, so if there's any questions for him, I could uh, bring him up as well. Um, any discussion on this item by council? I just had a question for them. Are they planning yeah. on putting five? Yeah, if you don't mind. Thank you. Sure. I know five of, at least five of the other G1 class holders also have video gaming. Are you planning on putting that in? Um, it's a small percentage of our space, but yes, we plan on putting that in too. Isn't, your, the, isn't the plan still to be more of a, a family atmosphere? Or? Absolutely. So the, the shop itself is approximately 5,500 square feet, and the gaming area is approximately 144 square feet. So think of it more like uh, Village Squire, where they have that little section in front. It'll be a little bigger than that, but it's more of that proportion. Do you think you need that to survive? You know, truthfully, I, I hope someday that we don't, to be honest, but I think at this point, I wanna make sure that we have all our bullets firing and make sure that we don't run into any problems I don't think we'll need it, but I think that every other restaurant in town has it, and it's kind of silly to not uh, tap into a, a source of income that everybody else has. That's all I had. Thank you. Alvin Glenn? Yeah, I was so surprised that for the liquor license. Uh, the applicant uh, stated several years back that he was going to be looking for an establishment to have video games, so I mean, that was the intent right off the bat, right from the, the get-go. I mean, it's no big surprise. Uh, Again, when do we say enough is enough on the, the video gaming? And uh, the thing is, though, is, is the video gaming was approved by council years back because of the idea of supporting the local businesses. So, if I may, um, let, let me finish or, first. Sure. Please. And, and, and I guess the point I'm making more than anything else is, is uh, yeah, I'll be voting yes for this tonight, but. Uh, just so that we send the message out there that uh, this is to support our local businesses and uh, kind of tired of those that come in just for the video gaming opportunities and not, not to really enhance the experiences of other things for our residents. Sure. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. No, I, I, I actually agree with that 100% and, and all I was gonna add to that is you know, a huge portion of our, our particular shop that we're building here is for live entertainment and specifically uh, arts, poetry night, comedy, and things like that. So we had to go through uh, city zoning to rezone the building so that we could have um, events like that. And so really, I believe that's gonna be the biggest, you know, thing that drives the business. And so it makes sense to put gaming with that type of evening and in, in some ways, I, I feel like I'm actually the best fit of everybody that kind of does have it. But, of course, I'm going to say that because I want it. <laughs> everybody else would say the same thing. <laughs> I, 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 I acknowledge that. That's fair. <laughs> Any other counsel? Uh, Alderman McCondon? I um, have known Mr. Kearns for quite a while and um, really had enjoyed Hidden Pearl uh, or at its last location. And I really found it to be a very eclectic um, atmosphere where uh, I would see a bunch of moms in the morning uh, meeting there uh, for coffee. But I also know that when my son was in high school and 
he went to West Campus, that he would go across town and a whole bunch of high school kids would go on late start Tuesdays and meet there before school. And so, you know, and then you would get other kids after school. And I just, um, it was really um, geared to a whole lot of different um, populations of the community and just a very comfortable place to, to meet and gather for um, a cup of coffee, some tea, um, have some business meetings. I know a lot of people from the chamber would gather there, and I've also been to events there too. So um, I'm very anxious to see it uh, succeed and, and open again and, and continue to succeed. Thank you very much for saying that. Thank you. Any other uh, council discussion? At this time, uh, Dan, you can go ahead and have a seat. Thank you. Is there any from the one from the public that'd like to make a public input or comment uh, regarding this item? I see none. At this time, I'm going back to council. Uh, I'm looking for a motion to grant request from Up Utopian Roast LLC DBA Hidden Pearl Cafe for a Class G1 liquor license located at 1250 North Green Street, an adoption of an ordinance increasing the number of Class G1 licenses in effect from eight to nine. Alderman Condon? It would make the motion as just presented. Thank you. Second? Alderman Schaefer? Second. Uh, any other discussions on this item, Council? Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Condon? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Glad? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderman Mahevic? Yes. Alderman Curry? Yes. Thank you, Council. Dan, good luck. Uh, next item on the agenda is a motion is uh, uh, to adopt an ordinance granting uh, use variance to allow an assembly use at 4105 West Crystal Lake Road in addition to a 700 square foot retail area. Uh, any discussion on this item at this time? Alderman Mahavik? I'd just like to say that I'm one of the uh, applicants for the SIG 19 Center and my wife Jenny and I are the zoning applicants. Uh, I was concerned that this request uh, coming before the council might present a common law conflict of interest in my role. Is Alderman, so after discussing this with David McArdle, uh, the best course of action seems to be that I'll take no part in the discussion of the matter, and when the matter is voted on, I will abstain from the vote uh, so that my vote should be considered neither a yes or a no on that item. Uh, however, during consideration of this agenda item, I will remain here so that I can help answer any questions that might come up. Thank you. Any discussion? Any questions for Alderman Havoc at this time? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask Kyla, are you, if you would, would mind coming up to the podium for public input? Um, so when I first started going to our church, Shepherd of the Hills, that's when I met the Mahevics. Um, they're one of the most welcoming people. I remember being so scared and them and their children were right there to guide me and be there. Um, I've known them for about four to five years, and I can assure you there's no one more suitable to run this um, Ignite group than them. When I, I remember particip <coughs> participating at m and at our church, and being the new kid, I was so scared, but Chan and Jenny were there to introduce me and to be there and guide me throughout that process of being the new kid, and I, by the time I left, I knew that I had made friends and I knew that I was comfortable being like where I was. Um, another thing that's about, great about the Mahevics is they're always involved, community, church, <coughs> school activities. The thing about that is that they get others to be involved. I never thought that I'd be involved in anything. Like I never thought I'd be helping the public, but. Chen and Jenny really opened my eyes to see what was going on in the outside world, and I have since been participating in fish for food collections, like Feed My Starving Children, and so many more programs like that, thanks to them. Um, I personally intend on volunteering at Ignite. Um, I believe Ignite is a great opportunity because it will give kids a positive environment to be themselves, where everyone is, welcome, is welcoming and doesn't pass judgment. Um, Ignite will also help kids stay out of trouble and make sure that they get proper, tutori proper tutoring, involved in good activities, volunteer, and of course have fun and be a kid. 
Um, some of the re reactions to re Ignite is that there will be gangs and drugs. Um, I say, like, why focus on all that negative what ifs and why it's always assumed that there will be gangs and stuff come community wise like that? The suicide rate and drug rates are increasing, and Ignite would be an outlet for kids and teens that could prevent suicide prevent so and prevent someone from experimenting with drugs because they have a positive and safe environment. That being said, I hope you approve Ignite. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, is there anyone from the public that would also like to make a public comment? I see none. I'm going back to council for a motion to adopt an ordinance granting a use variance to allow assembly use at 4105 West Crystal Lake Road in addition to a 700 square foot retail area. Alderman Curry? I will make that motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Alderman Devine? Uh, any other discussion on this item? Alderman Devine? Yeah, just uh, my concern was the parking. And, uh, if uh, staff would just uh, relate to how the parking is tied to this because the parking is not part of this address. And needless to say, if for some reason this was ever closed up and the conditional use, somebody else decided to open up something, um, or if that property was sold next door with the parking, So the park, this building had 4105 West Crystal Lake Road. There's a few different uses, a very unique building, a historic flour mill building. Um, and this use is an assembly use. And the way the parking's determined is by um, the, basically the building official by occupant load. Um, and it's, it's by how the building is utilized. And it's, it's, it's 0.25 spaces per person design capacity as determined by the building official. So that is tied directly to the property. As part of this project, the property is kind of configured um, oddly shaped. So it includes the building, it also includes the, the parking area immediately at the southeast corner of Main and Crystal Lake Road. So the common parking area, as well as uh, potentially overflow to the Crescent parking to the east if required. That's also technically part of this. Um, so they have to meet that standard. It's tied to the property. If it doesn't meet the standard, they're in violation of the ordinance. So it would be pursued as any other violation um, if that standard is not met or if there's an issue with parking. Thank you. Any other discussion by council? Um, just clarification, that, um, it is not uh, religious based though, correct? No, not denomination. Okay, that's what I was. Um, and I, just as another point regarding the parking, <coughs> years, uh, I'm showing my age here, years and years ago, um, that building housed what was at the time Smith Engineering, it was a very, fairly large company and, and uh, there ended up being plenty of parking. I, I feel confident that this is going to be able to work. Um, and I'm really excited for McHenry to have something um, devoted for um, people of our younger age to have a place to go and have positive activities. <coughs> Thank you. Alderman Schaefer? Is it just open to McHenry students or how does that work? No, all students will be welcome. From anywhere. Okay. Discussion by council? Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Curry? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderman Condon? Yes. Alderman Glam? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Thank you, council. And uh, Alderman Mahana, I look forward to volunteering in that location. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Anything Thanks. I can do to support it? Will we call the meeting at the, yeah. the floor is not before we open up? <laughs> 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 You said it. I deserve that. I didn't mean. uh, So congratulations to all of you, and uh, look forward to, uh, to you opening this uh, facility up. Thank you. Thank you. You're more than uh, welcome to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you wanted to stay anymore. <laughs> all right, this time.
time, we're going to move on to 8C uh, to, pr to approve the McHenry Rotary Club. Uh, one, uh, use of Peterson Park to set up, host, and clean up for the Blues, Brews, and Barbecue Festival from August 16th through August 20th. Uh, the second item is special event liquor license for the sale of beer, wine, and malt liquor with ticket sales to seize 30 minutes prior to park closure. Item three, a 50% reduction of the charges for the city services incurred as a result of this event. Four, permission to post temporary advertising signs in municipal right-of-ways. And five, the temporary waiver of code selection 16-25 to allow overnight camping in Peterson Park as presented. At this time, I'll pass it over to Bill Hobson. Thanks. So this, obviously this, I think we're all familiar with what this event is and what it's become, and it really is a staple of what our summer event schedule is, it kind of, they've shifted it, and I think that worked out really well. Uh, particularly coupled with the, by moving the date, um, they were able to attract the Kansas City uh, cooking competition, um, which really brought an interesting flair to that whole event. Um, it did, you know, we did have to have uh, an approval of for the camping after uh, this year, um, just through, through oversight of uh, the Rotary Club, that's been corrected. So the event, as you see presented here, is, uh, is what we hope to uh, move forward with in future years. I know that they've mentioned uh, our, the significant interest, interest that they've gotten um, from the Kansas City cooking uh, competition, that they anticipate having 50 teams going from 36 to 50. <coughs> we do have significant room um, on that west, or on, excuse me, on the, yeah, on the west side of the park to be able to house more of those uh, teams for the competitive cooking competition. Um, other than that, this has really been a, a great event. Uh, you know, the Rotary Club continually gives back to our community. Um, so I, I think uh, the, the type of group, uh, people that are bringing us to town, uh, as well as what they do for our community, that uh, waiver of fees, 50% of the fees, is certainly warranted. So I'm happy to answer any questions you have regarding this event. Thank you, Bill. Any discussion from council on this item? All of them glad? Would we have for our normal policy on uh, charges for the park? For an event like this, we negotiate the prices. So it depends on, you know, for example, with this many people, there's gonna be a number of days. So we look at the total setup charges, we look at the police overtime costs on a, on a daily basis. Um, all those type of things go into it. So there's not per se a, a, just a parks use charge. We look at what what, it, what our costs are, honestly, is how we look at it, and that's how we build them, particularly on a police overtime. Okay, so again, we don't use our parks for making money, I mean, you know, for income, uh, it will somewhat that we feel comfortable that the 50% negotiation will cover the charges and uh, the impacts. Absolutely. City. Okay. So I mean. Any other discussion by council? At this time, I'm gonna open up for public input. Uh, regarding this item, is there anyone in the public that would like to make a public comment? <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Uh, moving on to a uh, motion to approve the McHenry Rotary Club, one use of Peterson Park to set up, host, and clean up for the Blues, Brews, and Barbecue Festival from August 16th through August 20th. Item two, special event liquor license for the sale of beer, wine, and malt liquor with the ticket sales to cease 30 minutes prior to park closure. Item three, a 50% reduction of the charges for city services incurred as a result of this event. Item four, permission to post temporary advertising signs in municipal right-of-ways, and five, the temporary waiver of code section 16-25 to allow overnight camping in Peterson Park as presented. Alderman Shaver. Uh, I'll make that motion. You got it, as presented. <laughs> second, Alderman Curry. I'll second the as presented. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> any other discussion on this item? Just one thing, that last year I know for the camping thing we wrote in some things if they're Say we get a heavy rain and the, the property's damaged and that, that will be covered by the applicant? It will be covered and they've done a good job. And we've worked with actually both of them and the Chamber of Commerce where you know this year is a good example of the Chamber. Um, when we had all those heavy rains come in, they brought in trucks to pump off that. And, um, in future year or in previous years, we've also had to have some some work done behind the stage, to some turf restoration. So we have a good track record of working with both of these organizations to account for those type of things. I'm just, I, and I was just mainly thinking, I know that's always, but I was just mainly thinking of if they're gonna increase the overnight camping by that much, if there's 
if that happens to fall upon, you know, those people aren't always as, as, you know, not always citizens of McHenry and parts of McHenry. The involvement kind of thing to realize that they may be damaging something long term. I, I can, you know, just speaking to that, I guess, a little bit, because that was one of the concerns that we talked about this year with the, this group coming in. And it certainly was a professional organization. This is what they do. They travel from place to place. Um, it's kind of their, their hobby, but a really expensive hobby based on some of the, uh, some of the trailers and some of the uh, cooking utensils they brought to the park. I think they were pretty good stewards of the park and um, realized that, if, and even the rotary realized that if, if the park does get abused, we have that right to say, no, we're not gonna allow this portion of the event to occur any longer. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item? See none. Uh, correct, please call the roll. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Curry? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderman Mahavik? Yes. Alderman Condon? Yes. Alderman Black? Yes. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is downtown parking uh, discussion. Uh, I'll go ahead and open it up to Council to start off the discussion on where we would like to see the downtown parking go, concerns, questions for staff and uh, guidance where we want staff to go uh, with that data. I'll encourage. Yeah, uh, you know, we're reviewing the uh, information that was provided and, and comparing that to uh, there's a couple other communities that you provided information on which I thought was enlightening. Um, you know, it, just by looking at the numbers, it didn't seem like we're in that bad a shape when you just look at the parking number. Now it looked like, uh, I think Lake Zurich, they don't have any more public spaces than we do. Uh, I actually don't know the relative size of the two towns, to be honest, I'm not sure what the population of Lake Zurich is, but they, they seem to have more private spaces than, than we did, but other than that, the public spaces were about the same. Is that, are, are the community, I, I really don't know, is Lake Zurich about the same population, or is it, is it comparable? I, I think it's fairly comparable. I, can, I don't know the exact population. Yeah, right. I, I, and and it, can I add one more thing about why I included that study? Sure. I, the reason I like that study, one, it takes into account not only quantitative <coughs> but also qualitative data. Um, it, it counts spaces, but then it also defines a specific geographic area of where you're looking at. It, it also looks at specific days and times over a specific amount, a time period, same time period during that time, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday for four weeks during these hours. And then it takes in a qualitative component. It talks to people. Because I think the biggest thing with downtowns in general, and specifically downtown parking, is perception. Um, the space is, our space is available, and I think if you read the study, you know, they found that you know, a lot of it's perception. So that, that's why it, I like that study, because it was, it, was, it was a pretty simple study, yet it took a qualitative and quantitative approach at it, and it's a pretty, a fairly simple study. Well, and as I recall, I think it was the Lipser, one of the issues that came up was, I think there was a, one of those rather larger lots, I guess, wasn't it that there was this perception that it wasn't available for public parking? Is that the Lake Zurich one that I'm thinking of? Or, but, but it was like, you know, they, one of their conclusions was simply we needed to basically publish, they needed to publicize more what was available. And I, I just, and I know we have some similar situations with, with a couple of our lots that are behind, um, you know, the, the storefronts, like along Green Street and so forth, that, maybe people don't really, and we've talked about this, they don't really know that it's available. Like uh, Court Street? Right, exactly. Right. It says there are several areas downtown which appear to be available for parking, however they are unmarked and it's unclear for what purpose those spaces are being utilized. That's one of the general observations. Right. And, 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 and I should say that um, you know, Bill and, and his staff have, have done a great job and they're still not done. Marking, uh, parking, you see the signs, and continue to guide people downtown. And there's, and there's, 
that has helped, and, and there's still other things that can be done as well. Is this is this this hourly study? Now, now I, I know that some of the at least some of the things I've heard from, and again, these are just observations of talking to people, I guess. But um, it doesn't occur. They, they they did their study between was it 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. So they didn't really look at evening or, for example, Saturday night uh, type of thing, right? Yeah, it, it looks like they did, uh, yeah, between, but you can, you can, that's the thing, you can pick the hours, and it, it looks like they did eight to four. Um, my guess is that's kind of what they were having issues with, so, and they picked certain, I mean, you saw they kind of picked odd days, too. But I, I know for us, it, it, at least the comments I've heard is that it, on Riverside Drive, for example, that there's a concern in the evening. Right. Yeah. On a, you know, weekend, Friday or Saturday night, the evening is, it seems to be probably the biggest comment I've heard. But so I guess if the question, you know, is are we are we thinking? I guess it's just an open forum here. But are we thinking that this might be a study we would embark upon, do an hourly, you know, type the same type of deal? Is that what we're thinking? That's an option, and 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 you could tailor it to however you want it whatever times of day, whatever days of the week. I just, I, you know, consistency is the, is the best thing to do. And, you know, so you have data that's accurate. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion on this item? Alderman Glenn? Yeah, I'm the one that's been pushing it uh, for, for a while. And, uh, the thing is, though, is before we really get into parking, we should probably have been uh, talking more about where we're going with the downtown area, where we want to go, what do, what do we envision to see in those three? And it's nice for Lake Zurich to take and have their, their survey and everything else because they're established over there. You know, we've got a lot of opportunity that we still need to reap as far as, you know, what what's going on in the old some other nuts building now and, and uh, DC cops coming in. We're gonna have a movie theater that's going to take in a lot. And, and there's a lot of other things that will probably start coming, you know, to light. And the thing is, is we have to know what we're gonna need for parking down in the future, not just what we have right now. And that's my concern. I mean, you know, that we're, you have a developer or somebody that wants to invest in our community, they look at all the aspects, and if it says we don't have enough parking, that could be enough to turn who knows what percentage of potential investors away because of that. And we need to have game plans, whether we implement them now or at least we know down in the near future. Um, like do they have <coughs> parking requirements, or are they just like our some four where there is no parking required uh, on the developments? I'm not sure, but I do know that they basically <coughs> rebuilt their downtown. Okay, but you don't know if they were required to provide any parking? No, but I know that's very typical. Most downtowns do not require this. I mean, downtown, to require downtown parking is very unusual. Okay, but we don't know that for a fact, for 100%, but, but again, uh, do we know what their occupancy uh, is on those, those buildings now? No. 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 Um. I, I can, can I make one general comment? Mm -hmm. to, you know, I do have, and I did not include this because it was a parking discussion, but to, to your point about downtown in general, I mean, um, downtowns are always evolving. They're, I think the one thing that everyone agrees on is they're important to the community. So NIU Center for Governmental Studies did a downtown survey uh, and it was done recently um, this year of municipalities over 2,500 in population. And they asked a bunch of different questions and this is not necessarily the right way to do it, the wrong way, it's just what different communities are looking at. And they asked what your local conditions are, what, what's important in your downtown, so it's called, a, you know, it's just a downtown survey. So it might provide some thought process or for I, 
ideas for discussion. This is, I have an executive summary, and then obviously there's a, a more lengthy report, but that's a more holistic view of, of downtown in general. I mean, yes, you need to have a good, successful downtown area because of the fact that you want to draw people into your community to spend money, uh, have a good time down there. And while they're getting used to, you know, shopping in McHenry, then they're going to visit the big box stores or whatever else we have. Uh, so it is definitely a way to draw people into, into our community. Um, but I still look at what, what are the opportunities. You take a look, and unfortunately, we just have Green Street there as far as counts of parking. What about Riverside Drive? Because it's, again, the Gold McCurry brought up, and I brought it up in the past, and that's the fact, especially on a Friday night, uh, and sometimes Saturday night, uh, during the middle of the summer when it's nice, and there's no place to park. They got Riverside Drive counts. I'm sorry? They got Riverside Drive counts. And, okay, so what do we have? I mean, we don't have it in as, as in depth as we have in Green Street. The thing about it, more than anything else, is, is if you take a look at, let's just say Green Street, you know, you're showing, what is it, 590 some uh, parking and 205 Republic. And it's one thing to have a lot of private parking like Lake Zurich maybe has, but if it's all that building is established. You know, we've got the, how many parking spots just on the Marin Angel property that if that gets redeveloped, you know, how many parking spots are we losing over there? You know, how many parking spots across the street from uh, Buddy's, uh, the old municipal building, uh, those lots. I mean, we, we start losing uh, from development uh, parking. I mean, we've got to have a game plan because we're ultimately going to wind up having to provide a lot of that. And, uh, we need to have game plans to be ready to move when these opportunities come and have, have plans in place because at least if uh, a potential investor comes into town and they don't see this and they don't see that, at least if we can show them on paper that we've discussed that and we know where we're heading, that means so much more to uh, anybody that wants to invest uh, into any community. And uh, problem winds up more than anything else is until we actually as a council, decide on a complete vision of what we want to see in our downtown areas. I mean, um, you know, we have three sections there that need to be discussed, and we really need to come up with a vision before we can even really discuss the parking as a whole. Because, you know, I mean, we know that different uses require more parking uh, just by the sheer nature of the type of business it is and the type of drums that you have. I mean, if we're looking at Green Street and we're looking at uh, just like Riverside Drive is right now in the corner of Pearl and uh, Riverside, uh, where it's more of a nightlife type uh, animal, uh, then that type of business uh, is going to draw a ton of people on Friday and Saturday nights. and. Uh, we need to make sure as that develops that we have the parking available. And unfortunately, the onus is on us because we don't require the, the property owners on the zonings to to have the you know to provide the parking. So we have to provide it. Another thing, uh, if you take a look at some of our uh, our city parking lots, especially the ones behind Green Street. It's a tough sell back there because it is hidden more. Granted, we need more, maybe a little bit more signage, a little bit more advertising than we have with uh, the parking there. But maybe we need to look at uh, designing it a little nicer too, as, as far as upgrading it. And granted, we don't want to spend a fortune on it, but whether it be a brick wall here or there or something to just make it more of a comfortable atmosphere in, in our parking areas and, and uh, to where the city parking does stand out more. But I, you know, when I take a look and I think of almost 600 parking spots and only a third of them are public, uh, things 
change uh, over a period of time as far as development. We could lose a lot of those parking spots real quick. That that makes you know for concern. And, uh, <coughs> I'll leave that to see what any other alderman had to say. I, I will say also, uh, Ross and I have met uh, with several new building owners and existing bi uh, building owners that uh, are on green uh, to pave the, the rear of those buildings, uh, which is obviously to clean up the area, uh, but also to um, add parking for their employees or whatever the case may be. Um, and I think uh, we've had a, a positive with, um, with that discussion with them. We're trying to facilitate that to happen with the paving of uh, the DC Cops Theater portion, so that way they can kind of take that cost and help them uh, with the benefit um, for these home, uh, building owners. So. Um, I think we're, we're, we're working towards that. Obviously it takes money as well, um, but also the restriping the, the rear back, the parking behind uh, the gambler, stuff like that and signage. Uh, and obviously Parks and Rec has done a great job of getting those signs. And, and there's still things we gotta do. I mean, there's lights that we're missing, you know, that we uh, will put in the CIP for uh, next year, uh, some poles and stuff so forth to lighten it up and, and make people feel safe to park back there as well. Um, so I just wanted to let council know that, that we are facilitating with all the business owners to try to add parking to also help them with the cost by working together as a team on green. So, Alderman um, Schaefer? Yeah, a couple things. I, I think going back to something um, that Doug mentioned, <clears throat> I've over the summer and before that done a lot of uh, my own personal investigation in that area because it's uh, within walking distance of where I'm at. And, and anyway, the a lot of it is is perception, and a lot of it is based on um, knowing that you might have to walk a block or two at the max too. Um, but there is on Friday and Saturday night. Set this last Saturday night is a perfect example. Um, uh, Riverside Drive, Pearl Street, um, that whole area was very busy. Excellent, actually. There was a wedding at Smith's Garage. Um, Bimbo's was packed. I went into several of these locations myself. And, uh, I mean, it was, it was popping. It was really good. And there was parking, plenty of parking available. Um, it didn't seem like <coughs> any of those establishments had people uh, that couldn't find parking because you couldn't find tables to sit down or to find a spot at the bar or whatever. So um, if you have, in my opinion, looking back on some of these other communities, we've talked about uh, Lake Geneva many a times. Um, if you have a product and a business that people want to go to, they're going to find a place to park. Um, and most often, uh, the case is you can go back and, if I may use one of Alderman Glapp's terms, terms when he says back when, or you know remember when kind of thing, but when the movie theater was open and it was very busy, and it was a primary movie theater back in the 70s and 80s, there was uh, people finding places to park then on Green Street without in different lots and in different areas, even going back as far as when the bank across the street didn't have as much parking as it has, and people found those places to park, and, and again, it was maybe a, you had to walk a block or two. Um, I think going back to requiring these developers or the building owners to have to come up with parking is going to be a detriment to them wanting to be a developer or a building owner down there. If you force them, where are they going to find parking? Are they going to buy another building and tear it down? That, that, I mean, that's why downtown parking does not have requirements for parking because it's a downtown area. They're hoping that the community works with each other and works together to, to do this. And I think more than anything, it's a perception thing. It, it really is. You've really got to spend some time down there. And if you go down there on a Friday or Saturday night, cannot find a parking space, call me, because <laughs> I will direct you to one. You heard it. <laughs> I'll also say, you know, as far as Riverside, and I do get calls and complaints on Riverside uh, 
obviously more than green because uh, green is now just getting moving. But um, what bothers me the most is that business owners are complaining, but yet their vehicle is in the front spot, mm -hmm. which tells me that there's obviously either not a parking situation issue, or you know, and it's I'm not bashing the businesses. I understand they pay a lot of money and they have these businesses, but if they care so much, they would put their vehicle at the park and walk a block, half a block. Um, so that, that's just concerning, you know, when I start seeing that, then I would believe that there's a parking issue on Riverside. And the, the other thing I want to mention that I, I've mentioned to you, Mayor, and also to Doug, is uh, it doesn't show up on our numbers here, but um, at the um, south end of Riverside Drive, we have a multiple vehicle parking lot that's available that is consistently open within a block from Less than a block from Foxhall, less than a block from Windhill, less than two blocks from Bimbos, less than two and a half blocks from after the Fox. All of those places that have issues, that's not a long way to walk for people, is it? I, I don't understand. I, I guess I'm, if, if you drive down there and don't see that or don't know that, then it's on us to, to let people know that's there. You, correct me if I'm wrong, Doug, but that inventory wasn't included in our numbers here, right? for the Joey T's lot or the lot across the street from Joey T's? No, no it wasn't. And the, the, the core downtown plan does have the total public parking for the, for the, the kind of the tip area. And the valet is something you, you mentioned also that's not included. That's also another option that was investigating as well. So I, I just, I guess uh, for our short-term plan or long-term plans, you know, I agree we probably need to look at something, but then I, I throw out there as a long-term plan, again, forcing developers or building owners to provide parking, why would you buy a building down there? Who said that? That's well, I'm repeating what you said. Now keep it over your ears, because it's not what I said. So, watch what you say the, somebody else says, because that is not what I said. Please. Sorry if I got that That's wrong. okay. Okay. I'll have to watch the tape. The, uh, okay. the, the other thing is, if we, can um, show people what's available today and just educate those property people that it's okay for people to park in these certain areas. And I know you've probably exhausted everything you can to do that, but I think that's something that we may want to, to highlight a little more. I, I, there's more you can, I, I think there is more we can do. I mean, I think the, the um, that at least the time I've been here, I think that the safety issue is a factor for some people, walking. Um, I know the parking on Riverside Drive, um, the 28 spots um, to the west of the buildings, on the west side of Riverside Drive, there was um, not a lot of lighting, or there was, there was you know, people didn't feel comfortable walking, so. Which they've addressed, I think. Right, uh, so the we were property owner. Yeah to help address that. So that's one of those other perception issues. Um, you know, in an ideal world, I'd love to have a smart parking app. So it just tells you where to park, when, exactly when it's open, so you could go right there. But, you know, where that's a little bit for bigger cities, but that's the future goal. But there's other things you can do. All the women glad? I mean, all the women commented. <laughs> Sorry about that. To both of you. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I, I agree with Alderman Chaper. Um, I think, I don't know of any thriving downtown that doesn't have parking issues. To me, that kind of goes hand in hand. If they're doing well, then that means, that's a good thing. That means people are actively out and, and at businesses. Um, so in a way, that tells me that we're on the right path. If, people have to walk a little bit. Um, and that's not to say that I don't think we need more parking. I, I'm not saying that. I think, um, I, I hope we continue as, as we see tonight, you know, a, another um, business going in and, and hopefully that will continue and we'll continually need more parking. But <clears throat> I guess I have to question the, um, for me, the wisdom of doing a study on needing parking because I know we need parking, but, and I don't need somebody, I don't need a count to say that we need that. I, I'd rather use that money and save it up for Christmas lighting. 
but um, or whatever we need. Um, but I do believe that you know we need to, as you know, city planning. Um, identify some spots that if they become available that we can um, you know consider purchasing them for parking um, I always go back and I know I've said this several times but <clears throat> I think Woodstock is a perfect example that I can tell you not only going to a movie in the evenings um, on a weekend evening but also during um, the day, I've had to go around the square a couple times till I found a spot. And there's been other times where I've had to park out, if there's a, a big event, I've had to park out along the street. That's okay, I know that going in. I know that there's limited parking and I'm going to that destination, whether there's parking or not, so I'm gonna walk a little bit to get there. and. Um, I think that's okay. I do believe that you know we can continually uh, try to identify in whatever means we can um, getting to the public um, the knowledge of where those some of those quote unquote hidden parking spots are. I think we've started doing that with some of the signage. Um, you know whether we put that. Um, out in uh, on a graph or a, in a on a map on our web page or whatever, I think there are options we can do that will continue to educate the public on where those spots are and that it is okay. I think sometimes people, if it's not clearly marked, people are concerned. Oh, I don't want to get a ticket or whatever. But um, so the signage, of course, the app that would be awesome. I I, I know some bigger communities, um, you know, they'll have a parking. Uh, space and, and it'll tell you how many empty spots there are. I mean, we're not there yet. <laughs> That'd be great, but that's uh, not realistic. But but I do think that um, I think we're okay. I, I, I do. It's okay to walk. And parking is there. So, not to say that, I'm not saying that we should also be cognizant that we continue, can continue to look for um, opportunities for additional parking. But I think we're okay. Um, before we continue discussion, if you don't mind, there, there is some business owners that are in the public. Uh, is any of you willing to come up here and comment regarding the parking situation? If we step to the podium and please say your name for the record. Okay. Uh, my name is Mike Demelli and I operate Buddies. And um, so I started operating this a couple years ago. Right now it's going on two years. and. Parking was a uh, was obvious to me that it's a concern in our specific area. Two reasons: one is the nature of the business, and two is is because of the times of the business. Uh, and I talked with Doug quite a bit, and the signage is definitely improved. I mean, it's fantastic compared to where I thought it was a couple of years ago. I think you're right too. I have a better, I'm more familiar with it now, so for me, it's easier. But that's me, and I'm down there. So that's that's it. Where where I struggle, uh, and what I'm concerned with is, um, you spend quite quite a bit of money uh, marketing and, and doing things like that. And where we've seen an uptick in our bar, okay, which I would agree is a big downtown attraction. Okay, mm -hmm. we're literally flat or slightly down in the dining room, but we're up triple digits in delivery. That's where our business is coming from. And I pay a pretty premium rent in that location. So I'm on the cuff right now of making a decision whether we stay there or we relocate somewhere else or we do something else with the, with the property altogether. I think it's a two-way street. The business owner, I have to find ways to, to work with the city to improve our business. Um, and one of the questions I had is that if I provided like if I provided valet service, that, that would cost me because I would never do it myself. But where would I put the cars? How, how, that might be an opportunity because DC Cobbs is opening up, the theater's opening up, mix and mingle. If somehow we got together and figured out, uh, worked with a service company that might provide it cheaper as a group than myself, it's expensive, I, I investigated it. 
But it, it may make sense, and it would also potentially improve what it's like to, to go downtown on a Saturday night and eat out dinner, you know. Uh, parking is our, our one of our top uh, complaints. Uh, and I could literally show you on a graph our sales versus weather. Uh, and we're the opposite of normal. <coughs> Restaurants, usually when it's terrible outside, people go out to eat, they have nothing else to do. We're the other way. When, when it's bad outside, we die. We're, you know, we're basically dead. So I'm not here to complain. I'm just saying that I think valet parking would, would might be an opportunity to, to help us downtown versus, I mean, build garages. I wanted to compliment the science. I think the science looks fantastic. Um, but there is a message that said that is sent to me that said when I realized what was going on with my dining room versus the bar versus delivery, um, it, it's a problem. And yes, I am one of the business owners that put our cars in front with our signs on it because we want people to know we deliver. Number one, number two. Uh, I did have all our employees not park out front. Now, I'm not saying there aren't those that cheat. I got a staff of 30, but I try to keep them out of the front because it was a problem. If whoever said that, they were right. It was a problem. So we're working hard on that, but now they were parking behind Ned's. I don't know what that building's called. Uh, the the one across the hall. Yeah, we used to park them way before over there. The land. We'll, we'll figure something else there. But uh, it's a two way street. I mean, it's, it's, it's not an easy solution, um, but at least the signage has helped. And, uh, and uh, for us, my concern, as I said at the beginning, was, okay, we felt some impact when Mix and Mingle opened, because their events are typically on weekends, and typically at the same time as ours, but not so much, because of, you know they don't have a lot of events. But there's a concern. It, there's a great movie, a couple of movies. It's a good problem, right? Mm -hmm. There's great movies out, and then Cops opens up, and then we're there. That, that's that's a big that's a big pull on parking. So maybe something we have to you know work through or think through. But I think to assume it's not a problem wouldn't be a good assumption. And it it is my primary decision factor on if I stay or if I go outside of. Rent. I'm working very hard, have been for 18 months with the landlord, and then they sold the building, so now I kind of had to start over. But um, it, it is primary, it's in the top three reasons why we will either stay, relocate, or do something else. And that is parking. So that's why I'm here, and I, I just wanted to share. And I am willing to do or work with the council anyway I can to help the situation. Also, the crosswalk by us. Use a little striping, <laughs> especially with winter coming. So, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mike. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Dan Kearns, also talking about parking. Um, Buddy's is obviously in a tough spot because there's actually less parking on that section than even would normally be on that street, but. Um, you know, I don't even know if it's possible or feasible, but, well, for one thing, when businesses do open, people will be more willing to walk by. See, it's, it's tough to make a long walk when you're walking by one empty store after another. So as the thing fills in, I do think people will be able to walk that block and be happy about it, because they'll be able to look in windows and stuff. But, um, and I don't know if it's possible, but Fridays and Saturday nights, if there was a way to just even shuttle people around, even from the different downtown areas, then at least you've expanded the parking to wherever it's busy, and the people that are parking will see parking areas that they didn't even know existed because they'll be on that bus to get to where their car was. And again, I don't know, I don't know what the cost of something like that is, but that is a method where I could park over on Riverside and hang out there for an hour and then come over by Buddies, and I don't even have to get back in my car. And those two nights seem to be the two nights that are probably the most uh, troublesome will say with the parking. That's all I had to say. Thanks. <laughs> I'm Phil Sweeney. I didn't come here just for the parking discussion, but as long as it's open up, 
Um, you know, parking static, we're not going to create many more new spots, but the walking ability uh, could be improved. Uh, I do a lot of walking from one spot to the other to go around town. But the sidewalks uh, are kind of narrow. Uh, when you have people walk in opposite directions, uh, someone is really having to walk in the grass to get around, especially uh, on crowded days. So uh, I suggest uh, widening the sidewalks, make them a little better. Uh, crosswalks, uh, lighting, uh, safety uh, features, you know, the ramps and stuff. But uh, if you're going to promote walking around town, make the paths a little bit better. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Mike, I haven't met you in person. I know we've been. Yeah, going back and forth, but uh, I suggest that you and I sit down and facilitate a meeting with owners like Dan Kern and others that are on Green, uh, DC Cobbs, and the investors of the theater to maybe talk about doing a valet deal together. Uh, I think I think uh, the other com companies and other uh, facilities would be interested in that. So why don't you and I get together and we facilitate that? And that goes for Riverside Drive. I mean. Uh, I guess I could facilitate that too and see if there's some options to use the parking at Miller Point. Um, you know, for valet, I know that's something that Jim Arcos from Bimbos and I have discussed in the past. Uh, so I, I think that could be an option as well. So I'll facilitate that. And uh, Doug, why don't you, you know, uh, get with me and we'll get with Mike to facilitate the uh, first meeting with Mike first. There's also that, the, you know, the Metro lot is also very underutilized at this point. There's several lots, and I think that you know I think we have opportunities. I think the valet is a great idea. Um, if if I owned the theater 100%, I would have done it. Um, now that I'm only a very 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 small portion of that, um, my vote don't count. So, uh, but at that point, I, I think they would be 100% behind doing something like that. And I, I DC Cobbs as well. So, I suggest we get together and talk about that. And then we'll get Riverside Companies as well. And Jeff, maybe you can help with that. Um, all right. Uh, any other discussion from the public regarding parking? All right, go back to council. Not everyone at once. Alderman Curry. Uh, just <coughs> for clarification, I, and I don't know why I didn't really pick up on this until I'm sitting here, but we have this page that <coughs> comes up with total spaces of 507. Um, and then we have the downtown plan page for downtown parking map that comes up with a total of 639 and it appears like there's overlap here so can you clarify how many spaces do we really have somewhere between that <laughs> well, the, 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 you mean the green street between the green street and the core downtown well on the packet page 140 we have a chart and the chart has you know different parking, right. including parking on Green Street, for example, and so forth. And total spaces come up to 507. And then you look back to page 146, and we have a existing parking, street parking 389, public lot parking 250, total public parking 639. And I guess on my question is, there's obvious overlap here. There's a number of spaces that weren't included when you look at the highlighted areas, like that, especially around the, the savings bank alone, with 53 spaces that we included in the Green Street as a private. There was another 42 spaces, I believe, right behind uh, the, say, the former savings bank. That was in the inventory from, from the Green Street. So there, there was two significant areas <coughs> that were included. So there were, were some areas, just as I'm looking at it, um, that were included in that second portion. Right, good. Again, that chart in the one on 141, if I can, or 140, doesn't include, doesn't include Riverside, Riverside Drive either. Right. I think that's just a Green Street area. Right. Right, it's just Green Street. Right. That other one, which is showing 639, includes Riverside Drive area. So 639 is the number? It, it's closer, but there's probably, I mean, the, they're not, both maps are not. It probably needs to be perfected a little bit more, but one is of one specific area more, and the other one is of a larger area. Right, so the one of a larger area is 639. You're right. Okay, so so the number is 639. Yeah, that's closer to the more realistic count of the entire downtown, which includes 
Green, Riverside, Pearl, 120, but the other study concentrates more around Green Street yeah. area. But the, the 639 number is actual all public parking, right? That's on street, off all street. Parking. That's all public parking. Yeah, I'm right. Okay, so there's no private parking in there. Right. So, I mean, my earlier comments talking about comparing us to Lake Zurich, we're in far better shape in terms of public parking than they are. Now, there may be some individual situations that the gentleman just pointed out in Buddies where I, I and knowing that that's that's a unique you know issue there. But I mean in total when we look at it, again, I, I, it just by the numbers it looks like we're now I know the numbers don't tell the whole story always, but by the numbers it looks like we're in better shape actually. And that doesn't even include UATs. Yeah, right. But but so I guess the question is where are we going from here? I, you know, I I think we need to determine because everything's anecdotal otherwise. We need to determine whether we actually have a problem or not. So I would su suggest that we do something. Was that a was that a paid for study that Lake Zurich sort of did? No, they did it with an intern. And I'll just clarify if I can. The core downtown does include the former city hall, which it shouldn't because we don't. We don't have that. That is 75 spaces, which is not public parking technically. That's okay. kind of up. And then also the Riverwalk uh, Center, which we have five spaces right there technically. So if you take 75 and 40, you know, minus 111, so you're at 539, 529. Okay. Okay, but we're still public parking. Right. We're still better right. off in Lake Zurich. I mean, basically, right. there's no. I, I guess I would think that we would attempt to do something similar to what they did to find out, okay, you know, when you, it'll come out in each of these areas, you know, if, if there's a problem, but it's gonna come out when you do that, you're gonna have whatever time period you pick. I mean, obviously you gotta decide that, but you're gonna come out that, hey, it's 100% occupied at certain times of, you know, 8 p.m. on Friday night or something, you know, it's, there is no parking. Or, or not. I mean, it just seems like we don't know that. We're, we're sitting here and just guessing at this point. You know, some, some think there's a big problem, some think there's maybe not a problem, but we need, uh, it seems like we would need the numbers to know that, because otherwise we're just based on, well, hearsay. Well, plus it provides the comments the gentlemen are making about perception and times of day and right and all the, the qualitative comments as well. Seems like we need to know what the answer is. Because I'm not, I, if me personally, I don't make the decisions, but all the decisions, but I'm not sure I'd be wanting to spend, you know, we talk about, oh, should we, should we buy a certain lot or area and put in a parking lot for, you know, 400,000 or 500,000 or whatever it costs, you know, unless we know we have an issue, I'm not willing to spend a half million dollars of the taxpayer's money to add, you know, 70 parking spots or whatever, whatever the case may be, you know. So I, I guess from my standpoint, I would think we would want to do some sort of a study, if you will, similar to what they did. And it's not going to be perfect. It's never perfect, but at least you get some idea where you're at. And I think I think the study will show that it's an inconvenience versus a capacity issue, you know, in my opinion. But um, yeah, I agree with that too. You, you know, you got to be willing to walk a, a block, block and a half. I mean, if somebody mentioned going to to, to Woodstock, you're going to, you know, I've done that. You, you park, you know, parking a lot that's a block and a half, two blocks behind. You walk through that new walkway they got, nice mm -hmm. painted murals along the. The wall, at least it was in process when I went through there recently. Well, in Pearl and, you and know, you know it, it, <laughs> it's not a problem. You know, you find you find the spot back behind. It's it's well marked. You know the, where the lots are, and uh, it was actually I think one of the keys is it has to be well marked and it has to be a pleasant walk. And that, but that's what they have. It's a pleasant walk, and it was actually it's pretty interesting now with the murals and things that they, they've done. So. I, it just seems to me we do need to know what the numbers are before we can decide what we're going to do. 
Yeah, on the McCreary, how often do you uh, visit Woodstock uh, at the square? Do you do that every week? No. Oh. Okay. And again, the point being is, is it might be a, a, a nice walk uh, through Woodstock uh, if you do it once in a great while, but if you're the type that go to a certain area every single week, you get tired of doing that. You know, back in the 70s, people used to walk a lot more than they do nowadays. And today it's convenience. Everything is convenience. I mean, that's what the hypermarts are, you know, Walmarts and Kmarts uh, with the super uh, foods and all that, because people want to want to stop shopping. Everything is just for convenience and um, and perception. You know, granted, perception can be, you know, uh, 60, 70% of the game in a lot of cases with, uh, with shopping areas. But uh, I think more than anything else, like I say, uh, and, and to clarify, uh, the onus is on the city to provide the parking in the downtown area. We don't require the parking. But if we are going to have our downtown area uh, competitive, then we definitely, one of the, the main things uh, in competition, when you're looking at service type, uh, entities as far as food and all that, uh, entertainment, uh, it's going to bring in large crowds and we need to be prepared for all that. I mean, with the movie theater opening up in DC Cobbs alone in that area, that's going to hit. And everybody says, oh, there's so much parking out there. Well, that's great right now is as far as, because the Marin Angels haven't, haven't brought up an issue as far as anybody parking. And we've had uh, uh, a parking agreement with, uh, you know, across the street. Uh, but things change. You know, I mean, how do you know uh, the Marin Angels don't sell that property tomorrow and somebody decides to make a, a development there and all of a sudden, you know, the, the construction fences come in and that parking is gone. Probably two days before your movie theater opens up. You know, I mean, it's going to happen. And are, are, are we going to roll the dice like that uh, and gamble? I mean, granted, uh, we've got uh, more gaming than anybody else around, but are we going to gamble with everything? No, we've got to be prepared for all this. And we have to plan ahead. And, but the, the first thing we need is, is we need to know what we want our downtown areas to be and what we're striving for. You know, to say, oh, we just want them to be vibrant. Well, what, what do we want them to be vibrant with? Uh, uh, every other or every third store be an insurance office or uh, do we want uh, uh, Green Street to be all bars? Uh, I, you know, what does everybody envision uh, the downtown area to, to be? And once we got our game plans down, then we got to go out and find those type of businesses to open it up. Uh, but again, we need to be prepared all the way around is as far as having a parking that, that gets needed for that type of uh, future insights. And I don't think we're prepared for that. I think, I don't think we're, you know, the discussion has gone several times as far as, oh, you know, so we walk a block or two, you know, uh, all the kind of brought up as far as she uh, didn't mind walking a block and a half or whatever it was down to Woodstock. But she did go around the square two or three times before she did. Why? Because she wanted the convenience. And that's what, you know, that's part of the competition of other communities, <coughs> other shopping areas is convenience. You know, I mean, and I've stated this uh, back several weeks back, and that's the fact that I've seen in retail a, a change lately that people are willing to pay a little bit more if they're getting the service. And that's what they want. They want the service, and they're willing to pay for it. They're not going to be, you know, gouged, but if they're paying a little bit more, but they like the service and everything else, they're going to continue to shop there. And uh, if they like two different bars and they're pretty much both the same uh, type of pub or bar that they'd like to go to, or whether it's a restaurant or whatever, and one has convenient shop uh, parking and the other one doesn't, who do you think they're going to go on Friday night? Uh, I got out of work. I have to work in 40 hours this week, uh, eight hours today. Uh, I want to just kick back and relax and uh, take the family out uh, to a restaurant or take my wife out to her girlfriend to a, to a bar. Uh, I'm not going to want to walk two blocks. I, I want something close. 
So if I know if I go to point B rather than point A, I'm going to have it a lot closer. Now, does that mean we go out and tear up the half of the downtown area? No, but I think we need to look at the, what the options are. Um, we talk about downtown areas that, that always have problems with parking. And every time I go down to St. Charles, I, I don't see that type of parking problems. And uh, they don't even have parking on, on their main street because nobody parks on North Avenue. There's no parking there. But yet it always seems like there's, there's available parking spots all over the place. They've got a parking garage. They just put in a, across the street from that a massive uh, new building that uh, probably twice at least the size of uh, the Riverwalk building. And uh, uh, they don't seem to have the, the problems with parking. And I don't, yeah, I see people walking there. I, I see them walking from uh, store to store. And it's like somebody said, you know, they don't have to pass any empty buildings. And, and again, that's a lot of perception as well, you know. Um, but there's still always going to be people that want convenience. And, and that's what we need to, to plan for. One thing, I think we need to make a decision tonight where we're heading on that, or at least give some kind of instruction to staff of where we want to head with this, or, or are we going to ignore the parking at this point? I, I don't know. I'm not saying ignore it. I, I think, you know, have versus having the staff run in circles, which I think we, I'm here every day, so I see that. Um, um, but, you know, I would like to see if I could facilitate meetings with the, the, the businesses that are having issues mm -hmm. and talk about valet. I think that, you know, the school, I think, would be wide open to letting uh, Green Street use their lot uh, on the weekends, Friday and Saturday, because it's really two days of, of the week, in my opinion, right? I mean, do we all agree it's Friday, Saturday uh, after, uh, evenings? But uh, also Miller Point, whether it's valet to Miller Point, uh, valet uh, to the, what is that, west side of Pearl, uh, where the park is. I mean, I, I would like to see that before we send staff in circles on something that we already know where the issues lie. But if we can get these business owners and facilitate those meetings that people that care and that want to stay in our community, uh, I don't think it would be a, a big impact or cost to do that. Um, I think the school district, uh, obviously, we have a great relationship with District 156. Um, and uh, what's that home uh, behind? The villa. The villa. So the villa, I mean, they use that's a potential ten, shared yeah. location 15 spot. Sure. Right. So fifteen. Yeah, I mean, there's that's not a lot. Two thirds of the lot's not used. Oh no, fifteen yeah. is what they, they use. They use okay. probably yeah. over hundred. That's, what, that's yeah. what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So once again, working with them to, and I'm sure they wouldn't wouldn't mind the revenue too on a two nights that they're not going to use anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would like to table this and bring it up next meeting. Give me two weeks to meet with business owners and. You know, try to come up with a plan uh, regarding those businesses that want to be involved. You know, I mean, um, I know uh, Jim Arcos would be, in, you know, want to get involved, um, and I know several others that have concerns with the uh, Riverside and Pearl. And I, I honestly think uh, John Smith would, wouldn't mind getting in on that because I think he cares about the community enough to know that. You know, he doesn't want his business to impact everyone else either. So I think we could facilitate that. And uh, if you give me two weeks, I think uh, we table this and give me two weeks to really talk to those businesses. Jeff will walk Riverside with me. And, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, and I'll probably bring or whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> There's not tons on there right now. So, um, but at least, and, and I agree that we have to have a plan. I'm not saying that we don't need a plan, but I think at this time, I think I'd like to go the other route to see what these business owners have concerns about what days and what times they have issues with. And uh, this is more of a discussion to see what those uh, problems are. So I think at this time we know where council would like to see things done, but instead of sending staff on a wild goose chase, I would like to facilitate those meetings first. Yeah, I don't think two weeks is necessarily you know, any kind of a necessity as part of rushing. The main thing is, is that we are moving forward. Sure. So two weeks is nothing. I mean, if it takes four weeks or six weeks, 
I think two weeks I'll have an idea from talking to these business owners what where they stand. I think two weeks to give it, you know, I'll give that to my comments to the next meeting. If I go and, and we have uh, great progress with that, and um, you know, I'll be honest with you, when I, when I was only in the theater 100%, I was looking into ballet, and so I have information on it and costs and so forth. Uh, so it, it, I, I think two weeks should be enough time for me to at least get some direction and then come back to council and see where you guys want to go from there. Parking by Miller Point, you're talking to where? In Miller Point. So, I mean, the whole, there's, I mean, that's something that we should look at as striping it if we're going to use that as parking, but that's something that can be done. I know if there's a lot on the east side or west side or riverside drive, too, how many spots are in that? Lot? Well, that was well, the said, point I'm making is, is the fact that it was the only reason why I voted yes to buy that property. And then we market it, and it's still out of the market, correct? And we're still marketing that property on the west side, which to me was worth about three or four hundred thousand uh, dollars. What it would have cost us to buy property and tear down and create that many parking spots. Yet we're still marketing it to sell it with the other property across the street. But I, I, I think, I think, think that needs to be looked at. Uh, and I think once we get the developer to look at that property, we work with the developer just like. I will say Doug does. I mean, every developer we meet with, and I'm with those, him in those meetings and watching him in action, it's one of those things that he uh, he definitely makes sure that the, par the parking is, is going to be something that they can provide, whether it's uh, Ned Newman's property, a uh, developer there, or even Marin Angels. Um, you know, another thing with Marin Angels, we could always, if there's a real big need, there's always an opportunity to get that um, a lease agreement with them and the school, a lot of the high schoolers park there is the problem. So I mean you've got, you know, but it's in, in the morning so it's not going to adhere to any issues at Friday, Saturday evenings. But, um, you know, I, there's there's options I think, but, you know, once again, uh, to spend money and go and, and figure out where we need to go when we already know there's an issue, you know, there, there's not an issue, convenience issue. That's, that's, I don't, I don't think we need to spend big money as far as uh, doing this survey. I just think more than anything else is we need to do it with a common sense approach. And again, we need to discuss and have uh, visions of uh, where we want to go with the downtown areas and then worry about, you know, future needs of parking. Right now, yes, there are probably a few issues that we need to, to resolve or at least come up with some ideas. But uh, we do need, you know, for the future to, to be aware of what we're going to need for parking you know uh, you don't want to be looking at it uh, let's face it uh, especially you know how slow government goes that uh, if all of a sudden we have a couple new developments that create a lot of problems of parking we don't want it to wind up to where the parking all of a sudden uh, you know it takes us a year and a half to create let's put it that way so, so. So at this time, do I have a majority to give me two weeks to meet with these business owners? I agree. Everybody agree with yes. that? All right, so let's do that. I'll, I'll facilitate that. Let's not, uh, staff, don't do nothing at this point. I'll facilitate those. And Mike, thank you for coming, and everybody else that's here. Oh, Dan, you want to speak again? Oh, I, I You have 10 seconds. 10 Ready? seconds. I grew up in uh, Zurich. So uh, I do know Lake Zurich very well, and the only thing I don't want you to kind of get mistaken on is that they don't have the same number of storefronts that McHenry does. So you can't really go park for park and say, well, hey, we got you know, 800 more because the truth is we probably have three times the storefronts. You know, our downtown area is very unique with the three different areas and so it's really gonna be hard to get a comparison from another town anyway. So I think counting the storefronts and then basing the parking off the number of storefronts is probably a better approach and attack. But I'm sure I'll talk to Wayne about that later this week. Talk to you this week. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Uh, moving on to item 10, <coughs> staff reports. Is there any staff reports this evening? I just, uh, I have a couple of things. First of all, as Council could probably tell, we're, uh, we've done some tweaking of the microphones tonight. <laughs> so hopefully project better. Uh, hopefully the audience was able to, uh, to hear us all a lot better tonight. And we'll continue working on that. So just an improvement. Uh, one improvement in this room along with our new uh, audio our video visual system in here with uh, being able to post the agenda so people can follow along although i failed a couple of times at that tonight but, but i'm there where i need to be now 
as well as uh, when there's presentations, we'll be able to have presentations on there for everybody to follow along on instead of the old screen that was probably older than I, than I am that we looked at before. So uh, just a couple of improvements in this room. Um, most importantly, or more importantly, just I wanted to publicly uh, thank Chief Jones. This will be his last uh, city council meeting with us. Uh, Friday is his last day, not that he's counting the days or his office is cleaned out or anything like that. <laughs> Uh, but 28 years, uh, Chief Jones has served the city of McHenry, and uh, as, you, as you know, council in a variety of capacities, uh, from patrol, and I know he's worked, uh, what, nine years on midnight shifts too, Chief, and, and uh, most recently, I mean, I've had the pleasure to work with him for the last six years, and uh, if the last six years of production is any, uh, any indication of what the previous 22 years were, but I know we got our money's worth out of him <laughs> with uh, things like the dispatch center and, and, uh, and projects like that that he's been able to, to, to really push forward. And I know he won't take uh, all the credit for that because it's his staff that put that together too, but it was still his visioning and leadership that allowed those things to happen. So I just wanted to take a second publicly uh, acknowledge Chief Jones' 28 years of service and thank him for, uh, thank him for that service on behalf of the city of McKenna. Thank you. Appreciate it. Don't forget it's Thursday, 3.30. 3.30, cake <laughs> reception right here. I just saw, I don't know if you have many words, but I, I just want to say I appreciate working with all of you and, and these directors here, the, 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 what I've seen them do and how professional we are, they, they are. Um, it's been an honor to work with all of you, and I really do. I cherish the times that I've got to spend with all of you and get to know you much better, and it's in a personal and professional manner. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Chief. We know you're going to miss these meetings. <laughs> we'll come back on November 6th, if you'd like. Um, I also want to thank Ed for uh, staying tonight and uh, on your own time and making sure these mics are working. Uh, I had mine off, Ed, this way I didn't just record, yes. so I apologize. Um, but thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Moving on uh, to council and uh, mayor comments. Is there any council comments at this time? All the ones that uh, kind of, I don't know why I keep doing that. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's bad. I'm sorry. Uh, just a reminder that this, there is a community development committee on next Monday at 7 p.m. And again, thank you, Chief, for all that you've done, um, not just as a police chief, but in the community. On the chamber? Uh, there's also a uh, Parks and Recreation Committee special meeting Thursday the 19th uh, at 5.30 p.m. Thank you. To discuss uh, community needs assessment, by the way, results. Perfect. Any other comments from council? Uh, <clears throat> I have a few uh, comments uh, this evening. Uh, the EDC will be having uh, the first meeting November 1st, so that'll be exciting to uh, get that kicked off, uh, I'm excited about that. And once again, having the vision of where we need to go, at, at whether it's the downtowns or a city as a whole, uh, we need to look at it as a, in a broad area, not just downtown areas. And, uh, so, and also as of today, I started posting uh, uh, weekly reports on social media. Um, I, I, I want to be, I hate the word transparent, but it is to be more transparent let the public know what we are doing, our accomplishments that we are uh, doing every single week. The staff is uh, uh, definitely working hard uh, to get not only the goals that we have trying to accomplish, but day-to-day um, -day, uh, council requests or <laughs> my requests as well. Um, but, you know, I think it's important also via email. I, I have been sending emails to entire staff. Uh, and employees throughout the city, letting them know what's going on. Uh, communication, once again, uh, through the city and our employees are important um, from me and from council and from staff to let everyone know that we're all on the same page. Uh, so I'm excited that that has started as of this morning and every Monday that report will be going out uh, as well. So um, that's all I have for my comments. Uh, the next item on the agenda is an executive session for the purpose of discussing collective, collective no, 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 I did that again. What is it? It's, it's a purchase of lease or real property for the use of the public body. Thank you. Uh, once council votes to end an executive session, I would ask the public to step out of the council chambers 
However, you will be allowed to re-enter upon close of the executive session before meeting adjournment. Uh, I'm looking for a motion to enter executive session. session. Alderman Condon? So moved. Uh, second. Alderman Curry? Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Condon? Yes. Alderman Curry? Yes. Alderman Glab? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Mahavik? Yes. Alderman Levine? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> sure. Take your time, don't run. You're not going anywhere.